Good evening everyone, myself Gautam Sarma, I welcome you all in acceptance education. This is part third video of the moving charges and magnetism. We have already discussed about the moving, when a charge is moving about in a magnetic fields and what will happen. So these things we have already discussed. So today I will start discussion with the buyout Savart's law. <coughs> what is buyout Savart's law? Let us consider a small element length dl of a conductor x y carrying a current i. So suppose there is a conductor, there is a conductor like this, okay, there is a conductor x, y and it is carrying a current i. Let r be the position vector from point p from the current element i dl. So if we take a current element like this, so take a small current element and from here, I want how much magnitude of magnetic field is at this point. So this is the R vector. R vector means magnitude of the distance as well as the direction. Okay. <coughs> so I hope you have understood this. So let us uh, see again. Let us consider a small element uh, element of the length length dl of conductor x y carrying a current i. So this is a conductor and it is carrying a current i. And we can take a small element, dl element, and from this element, there is a distance at a point P, which is at a R vector. Okay. <coughs> now, since current element I dl is a vector, see, if this current element is, we will consider, so this is known as I dl. Okay. And it is a vector. And its direction is tangent to the element. See. Its direction is, its direction is, see, if we con consider this current element IDL, then its direction is tangent to this point. If you consider a current element IDL at this point, so this direction is at this point. If you consider this as an IDL element, so current will be in this direction. IDL vector will be in this direction. It means that always you need to take a tangent, okay? So it is a direction is tangent to the element and is acting in the direction of a current flow in the conductor. So it will always act in the direction of the current. It should not act in the reverse. And there is a point P at which we want the magnetic field due to current carrying conductor. So let us consider DB is the small magnetic field due to the current element this. So if you consider, see here, if you consider if you consider a small element the ideal so due to this small element the current um, magnetic field at this point is db yes or no so magnetic field due to the current element is db now db is purpose proportional to the current if you increase the current the magnitude of current suppose you have you have used the current of 2 ampere and you have increased 2 to 5 ampere 5 to 10 ampere so what will happen if you increase the current so what will actually happen its magnetic field will increase right <coughs> one more thing is that if you increase the current element length that is dl so what will happen magnetic field will also increase one more important thing is that sine sin theta so theta is the theta is the angle between the current element and the position vector right so if you talk about the theta see here this is the current element current element and this is the position vector so the angle between this is theta if angle will increase so what will happen magnitude of the field magnitude of the field will also increase one more important thing is that it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance if you increase the this, this distance so what will happen db will also increase right so we have got how many equations we have got one two three four if you combine it so what we will get if we combine this all four equations so finally db can be proportional to idl sine theta divided by idl sine theta divided by r square so this is the equation. So as per the buyout sabot law, it said that if you increase the current, magnetic field will increase. If you increase the length element, 
current element so magnetic field will increase if you increase the angle between the current element and the position vector so dv will increase and if you increase the r square then dv will also increase okay so these are the four equations got it now <coughs> when we combine this combining all the factor we get dv is equal to i dl uh, proportional to ideal sin theta by r square if you remove this proportionality constant with the k so what will be the value of k k is equal to mu naught by 4 pi and it has a value of 10 to the power minus 7 i hope you have understood now now finally dv is equal to mu naught by 4 pi into ideal sin theta by r square is the proper equation and in the form of vectors so what is the direction so direction will be direction c this is sin theta and i i is the scalar dl is vector okay so So see here finally we have got uh, the magnetic magnitude of the magnetic uh, magnitude of the magnetic field magnetic field as dp is equal to mu naught by 4 pi ideal sin theta r square but you know that magnetic field is vector so or magnitude of magnetic field intensity is a vector form so how you will find the vector so just it is very easy uh, so you know that current i is scalar but the angle dl see if you consider this uh, this this is a wire and this is a current element dl it has a direction this side and it there is a position vector r r r vector so the angle between them is theta and here it is sine theta we know that a cross b will be equal to a b sine theta right a b sine theta here since we have dl sine theta but what about r so we don't have r so we can directly put here r cap because i want that i want only direction we don't want the magnitude okay so here we can in place of uh, dl sin theta in to r cap can be written as here r cap see this is r cap okay so finally we can write here mu naught by 4 phi into i into dl cross r cap by r square and the here direction of dp is represented by right hand rule okay right hand thumb rule and this is a cross product okay it's cross product it means that dl cross r see for example if i will draw here if i will draw here the <coughs> current element here this is suppose dl so dl current element has a direction is in which direction this direction okay and the the, uh, the r vector or the position vector or the position vectors let us suppose the position vector is here this one is the position vector and this is the r okay this is r and this is angle theta if you cross so what will happen if you use right hand thumb rule so if you cross dl cross r so what you will get so suppose it is in the plane so dl cross r the magnitude of the dv will should have must be perpendicular to this fourth one so it may be cross or dot so if you use the right hand rule so you will get a cross that is cross means what magnetic field is entering inside the paper or inside the screen Magne magnetic field <laughs> is going into the screen sorry so finally you understood that what how how you will find the direction of a magnetic field okay now let us go for next similarities and disabilities between the biot Seifert laws and coulomb laws similarity first of all both the laws for a fields are long range as in both the laws the field at a point varies inversely 
as the square distance as c here f for electric field force due to electric field is equal to k q1 q2 by r square and if you talk about magnetic field it is also inversely proportional to d square that's why it is long range long range <coughs> laws both the field obeys the superposition principle superposition means what if f is equal to f1 plus f2 so this both will be superimposed means addition we can add directly to the this force so this is known as superposition now what is dissimilarities electrostatic field acting along the displacement vector but in magnetic field acting perpendicular to the containing ideal and r c here <coughs> electric field suppose this is your positive so the electric field e is equal to force by q it is acting outside along this line joining anyone okay but when we talk about the magnetic field so see here d it is suppose dl and it is your r and it is an angle theta so the magnetic field is perpendicular to both this one but the electric field is uh, acting along right so the electrostatic field acting along the displacement vector when you move in this direction so it will be along but here magnetic field is not moving in, uh, moving in this direction magnetic field is perpendicular to r as well as d element okay coulomb's law is independent of an angle by its law is an angle dependent in coulomb's law you will not find any cross cross areas so this will be k q1 q2 by r, r square or electric field is equal to k q by r square okay but if you talk about the biot sabert law so you will think the biot sabert law <coughs> so in biot sabert law what happens you have to use cross product that is sine theta is involvement so angle is very important in biot sabert law but in uh, electrostatic score coulomb's law biot sabert law is not important right so i hope you have understood this <coughs> Now, magnetic field on the axis of a circular current loop. See here, <coughs> but this is very important. If you want to find magnetic field on the axis of a circular current loop, see here, this is the current uh, a loop, and current is going in this direction and coming in this direction, okay? And the distance. Let us consider this is as a DL element. So I is moving, so ideal element. So that this you you think that this line, this line is making an angle of 90 degree with the current element. See here. Always, if you take from this pole place also, it is making an angle 90 degree with the current angle. See. So you can understand that everywhere it is making an angle of 90 degree everywhere from everywhere it is making an angle of 90 degree right <coughs> now i hope you have understood the diagram now the, what about the magnetic field so this is current element so suppose this is your current element is in this direction r is in this direction so what will happen the cross product of this will be in this direction and this is perpendicular see here again you think that this is r vector and this is your current element vector okay current element vector this is your current element vector so see here db is perpendicular to both this one this one so you should try to understand that this this um, uh, db that is magnetic of um, field intensity is always perpendicular to this r vector as well as dl element okay so we will discuss this and derive this okay <coughs> Now see here, consider, <coughs> now consider two elemental element, element, a small element of the coil, each of a length dl, okay. So let us, we suppose this, uh, we have considered and this dl dash, okay, <coughs> at C and D, which are situated diametrically opposite at the edge. 
now we have done we have drawn this distance and at this distance which is at a distance of x and this is your r and this is the radius a is the radius of the circle a is the radius of the circle now if you talk about this distance that is r vector so this is equal to root under a square plus x square by pythagoras theorem okay so you have got this distance same this distance also you have got this is the angle made by this okay <coughs> this is phi so this is your phi now you know that <coughs> this db and this db dash db is due to dl element and db dash is due to dl dash element okay so db is making an angle phi now you will think that why sir why it is phi so see here see here this is your phi angle and this is your 90 degrees so what will happen this will be 90 minus phi now again this is also 90 degree why because this is r vector and this is the <coughs> this is your db vector so finally if this is your 90 degree so if this is your 90 minus phi so that definitely it has to be phi then only the after adding we will get 90 degree okay so from here you have understood you have understood that how this angle is phi <coughs> now we have got this right i hope you have understood now see here if this is your db so if you <coughs> break this into two component horizontal as well as vertical so due to db this will be db cos phi and here we have db dash cos phi <coughs> And this horizontal component is dv sin phi, and this is dv sin phi. So I hope you have understood this, right? Now, according to the Biot-Savart law, the magnetic field at a point P due to the current element ideal at a C is how much? dv is equal to mu naught by four pi ideal sine ninety by r square. Now you will be thinking, sir, why you have taken sine ninety? sin 90 means what angle we are what we have studied <coughs> what we buy out separate law the angle between dl element as well as r c <coughs> this is your dl element and this is your r vector so the angle between these two is theta so here also <coughs> here i have already told you that anywhere from this point it will see let us suppose <coughs> This is your ring, and at this point, if you want, see, you join this any element, right? So this is your element, and this is your this. So this is making an angle theta. I'm not talking about internal this angle. I'm not talking about this angle. I'm talking about I'm talking about this angle, right? I'm not talking about the angle between these two. That's, this will be definitely theta. It won't be 90 degree. But I am talking about this. Suppose this is your element, and this is your this. So this angle. I'm talking about this angle. So this is your 90 degree. So that's why <coughs> here we have put here 90 degree, 90 degree, and this is your r square. Okay, and db dash <coughs> this db is equal to mu naught by 4 pi ideal. A square plus x square. Now you will think that why a square plus x square. See here, r is equal to root under a square plus x square. So here we can write this. Now the direction of db is in the plane perpendicular to the dl and r. It is directed as given in the right hand screw root. So I have already told you that. <coughs> now similarly, db dash will be equal to mu naught by four pi ideal sine ninety degree because same situation, same scenario. See here. If you talk about DL, so it is also making an angle 90 degree, 90 degree with this. Okay, again, I'm. If you are confused, try to understand. This is central axis, and if you want, if you want this angle, see here. This angle is 90, degree, not theta, but I'm talking about this angle. Angle. It is like this angle. Okay. <coughs> this angle. So this is. I am not talking about the internal angle, okay? So from here also we can write dv dash is equal to mu naught by mu naught 
dividends is equal to mu naught by 4 pi ideal sin theta and this is already equal to the magnitude of dv so finally we have got dv or dv as value as a mu naught by 4 pi into ideal by a square plus x square in the direction along pf and dp so direction i have already discussed these things okay <coughs> Now from equation 1 and 2, dv is equal to d dash, this is equal to mu naught i dl by 4 pi into a square plus x square, okay. <coughs> now since the component of the magnetic field of py and py dx are equal and opposite, they will cancel each other. See here, component of this one will be in this direction and component of this one will be in this direction. So they will both cancel. Either it is dB and dB dash cos phi. Why? Because dB is equal to dB dash. And both have a cos phi only. So, finally, they will, a vertical component will be cancelled out. So, what will be added? So, horizontal com component will be added. So, we will talk about the horizontal component only. Okay. And the component acting uh, along the Px are in the same direction. So, they will add it up. So, horizontal component, if you talk about horizontal component that is dv <coughs> sin phi, so they will be added up. For example, this so many elements are there. So, if we talk about one element, we have got dv sin phi. So, if you talk about total element, so we need to integrate, right? So, so the total magnetic field at a point P due to the current whole circular coil because I am talking about a small element then we have got dB is equal to mu naught by uh, mu naught ideal by 4 pi into uh, divided by x square but I want I want uh, I want magnetic field due to whole circular path so we need to in, uh, integrate so P is equal to integration dB sin phi right so what is the value of dB so dB is equal to mu naught by 4 pi ideal by a square plus x square into sin phi <coughs> now here mu naught i current is constant 4 pi is constant a square is constant x square is constant and even sin phi is constant but what about dl dl is switching so if you integrate whole dl so this will be total length that is 2 pi a and what is about <coughs> what about uh, sin phi sin phi is equal to a pi c sin phi let us find the sin phi if you talk about the sin phi here let us uh, remove all the things yeah sin phi if you talk about the sin phi if you consider this as a triangle so sin phi will be equal to perpendicular by hypotenuse that is a pi hypotenuse is your x not hypotenuse is your x it is root under a square plus x square okay so let us put the values here okay <coughs> so here <coughs> here it will be see here here it will be dl integration of dl that is total element is equal to 2 pi r that is 2 pi a into what is the value of sin phi sin phi is equal to a by root under a square plus x square while you will add on complete on so you will get mu naught into mu naught into 2 pi a square plus 4 pi a square plus x square to the power 3 by 2 along the px so the finally <coughs> finally the magnetic field due to circle having a current i at a distance of x having a radius of a is will be act along this direction <clears throat> and the magnitude will be mu naught 2 pi n a i a square 4 pi by a square plus x square to the power 3 by 2 you are thinking why n if it is your one turn so you you will put n is equal to 1 if it is your 5 turns so put n equal to 5 so if you increase the number of turns so what will happen magnetic field strength will increase right so i hope you have understood this okay <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.